Historical Society. Thank you all for coming this evening. We have a great program for you tonight. And um, we have uh, one more uh, event for this season before we go on our uh, annual summer hiatus. We have the uh, annual dinner coming up on June 8th. And the window for signing up for that is getting narrower and narrower. So if you haven't already signed up, um, now is a good time to do it. We have, um, we have sign-up sheets, uh, I believe. Do we have them at the, that table? Yes, we have them at the table by the entrance there. And you can, uh, you can fill that out and sign up to go there. And uh, it's, um, <clears throat> it's gonna be at the old Fullerton Masonic Temple, uh, great old 1920 Spanish colonial revival uh, there in downtown Fullerton. Um, and uh, there'll be a, a buffet, sort of an Americana buffet. Um, we're gonna have uh, a social hour, a silent auction, and there is some really cool stuff in the silent auction. I think I'm probably going to be bidding on most of it. So you're gonna have to outbid me, which shouldn't be hard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you can outbid a historian, I know. Um, and, uh, and, a, and a cash bar. And uh, our presentation for the evening uh, will be author, educator, TV personality, and lecturer George Geary. And he's going to be talking about, his topic is California-born diners, burger joints, restaurants, and fast food that changed America. So it's all the nostalgic stuff we remember, all the places, all the, the Bob's Big Boys and the other chains that were, you know, part of our life uh, growing up here in Orange County, the snack shop and all these others. So um, it, it'll be, uh, he's, he's not just talking about the food though, but about the, the history of the, the, the chain, the restaurant chains, the restaurants, um, you know, the, and, and how Southern California's culture shaped those and made them possible. Um, so um, <coughs> that, that's gonna be a great program. I have had a lot of people wanna sign up just because it's George Geary speaking and they don't even know what the topic is yet, so that's great. And, um, <laughs> but anyway, it is, uh, do, do uh, pick up a flyer if you haven't already signed up and, uh, and sign up tonight um, and get the registration information. Also want to mention we do have um, also some of our books at the back table there. Uh, Daniel can help you if you're interested. We have, uh, uh, if you haven't been to a meeting uh, in, a, in a couple months, uh, there are titles over there you may not have seen before. So we are, uh, we, we are expanding our stock of Orange County history volumes to sell. So there's some good stuff over there. Um, and uh, so, and then, um, <clears throat> then, of course, we've got next year to look forward to, and we've got a, a full year already programmed. Uh, if you've got your newsletter, um, it will have the whole roster of programs in there for coming up. Um, I'm not sure if it was in this month's or if it was last month's, so but we ran the whole, the whole roster for next year. But a lot of good stuff. So, with that, I would like to introduce our uh, the, the speaker this evening. Uh, Linda Sadeghi is the owner, operator, and designer of Little American Business, LAB, or Lab Incorporated. Uh, her past projects in, uh, <coughs> include uh, the Anaheim Packing House, which we all know and love. Yes, clapping is in order, yes. <laughs> um, the Casino Building in San Clemente, which again, we all know and love. And, uh, and one that is um, kind of near and dear to my heart, and I'm sure some of yours too, is the lab, the anti-mall, as they call it, in Costa Mesa, which I was in college when that opened, and so I was exactly that target demographic. And I know, I was just as big a geek then as I am now, so picture when I come back, you know, I was an art major at that point, and I come back and I talk to all my buddies in art school, and I'm like, oh, you gotta check this place out. This is, it's different. It's, it's, it's this whole different concept, and you, it's, 
uh, it's a yeah, it's kind of a shopping mall thing, but it's not. I, I don't know how you describe this. And you know, they, they saved this old building and they this complex of buildings and they turned it into something else and really and and so they go over and they come back and they're like there's something wrong. You spotted this before. We're the cool kids, and you spotted this before we did. Jepson found it before we did. There's something terribly wrong with the universe. <laughs> the cool kids were supposed to find it first. Well, the cool kids did find it, and a whole lot of other people have found it, too. And that really was uh, a kickoff to a whole, uh, a whole field of work for Linda. Uh, she's an artist and designer her, uh, whose career started in the fashion industry and after 20 years she and her former partner launched their first of many adaptive reuse projects with the lab, um, Antimall, and today Linda and her team continue to rehab and repurpose commercial real estate across Orange County, breathing new life into significant sites that otherwise would have met with the bulldozer. And boy does Orange County need that. So. Without further ado, Linda. Oh, did that disappear? Super, thank you. Can we turn off half the lights just yes. for mood lighting? <laughs> cool. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Great, there we go. First of all, thank you so much for having me. I raised three boys and I couldn't get a word in edgewise, so when I get a microphone, I'm going to town. <laughs> um, I want you to interrupt me whenever you want to. Just raise your hand and I'll call on you because I'm going to go over one, two, three, four, five, like six different properties that we've touched. Um, and you may have a question in the moment that I could answer quickly in the moment, and then I'll be running off way ahead of you, and you know, I want to catch your questions at the right time, okay? So don't, don't feel bad about interrupting, I'm really used to it, okay? All right, so, hello. Um, the name of our company is The Lab, and it stands for Little American Business. We were a mom and pop when we started. I'm now a mom and he's now a pop and we work on opposite sides of the street, pretty friendly so far. So, um, but we started the company 30 years ago. So um, we were um, very passionate uh, designers in the clothing industry. That was our first career, actually. We met at Pratt Institute in Brooklyn. So um, it wasn't as pretty as it is now. Uh, there were like shootings over the weekend and burning cars in the, I didn't tell my mom, so. <laughs> okay, but um, after 20 years in the apparel industry and a lot of that out here in Southern California, we worked for um, PCH, which was a surf brand. I worked for OP, which was a surf brand. Uh, my ex-partner worked for Quicksilver and Gotcha. Um, we decided that it was time to try something new and we were, approaching 40 and in the fashion design industry that's like retirement age <laughs> there's so many young designers so we thought what can we do and we were actually a very good team complementing uh, each other's uh, skill sets so we thought let's do something on our own so uh, we came up with the idea and if you've lived in Brooklyn at least when we did uh, it was cool to go find an empty warehouse and make that your home <laughs> that was the big thing. Let's go live in a warehouse. So when we came to Southern California and we were starting our own business, we said, let's find a warehouse because that was kind of our background. So I called up a few um, realtors and I said, please find us a warehouse. We've got this retail idea. And the retail idea at that time was really born of our fashion design experience. We thought, we'll get all our surf industry buddies and we'll open a... a shopping center that only has the surf buddies and we'll sell direct to the customer we won't go to Macy's we won't go to Nordstrom's we'll sell direct and actually my ex-partner was uh, actually the president of Quicksilver at the time and they were starting to do that at Quicksilver because uh, if you remember if I want the um, shopping centers were kind of uh, imploding and a lot of uh, big stores were buying others out it was very chaotic uh, during that time. So we thought, oh, we'll be brilliant and we'll sell direct to the consumer and avoid, you know, the, the buyers at the retail. So 
brilliant lasts about five minutes when we started calling our surf buddies and going, hey, we found this great uh, uh, warehouse. I found the warehouse, actually. The, the realtors had no idea what we were talking about. We were talking a foreign language. So they gave me a book about two inches thick of like every warehouse looking property in Orange County. And I'm sitting there plodding through page by page by page. But I found the lab location after about an inch, and I said, I think this is it, because at least you can be able to tell somebody where it is. So our golden rule is it's a half mile south of South Coast <coughs> Plaza. So that was our landmark, and people found us that way. So we leased that warehouse, and then we started calling our surf buddies, and they said, well, great idea, but I'm not going to come if so-and-so comes, and then I don't want to be next to so-and-so, I want to be over here by so-and-so, and we're going, oh my goodness, like having a bunch of children. We forgot about competition, you know? So what we did was we picked one, I think we picked Rusty to begin with, and they opened their own direct shop, which was novel for them, and then we went and built all the other tenants around them. We cold called Urban Outfitters. Urban Outfitters was privately held 30 years ago. It was husband and wife. Oops, did I lose my help? <laughs> oh, okay, there we go. I'm talking too much per slide. Okay, so uh, I'm watching the clock. Don't worry, you won't be here till 10 o'clock. Okay, so um, this this was. I should have shown this two minutes ago. So fashion and architecture we found to be very similar. Um, I love this quote from Coco Chanel, that it's just a matter of proportion. So I think the lessons learned in fashion design um, and design in general really started to apply to what we call brick and mortar as our new medium rather than fabric. So we had a lot of fun putting the lab together and this is our 30th anniversary this year. Uh, but anyway, back to Urban Outfitters, we cold called them from our house. We didn't have an office. So I was upstairs, no, he was upstairs, I was downstairs. So when the phone rang, there were no such thing as cell phones, okay? Um, I would answer and I'd go, the lab, can I help you? And they'd go, oh yes, we got a call from uh, so-and-so and, and talking about a new uh, property, a new idea out there. I said, hold on please, let me page it. I laid the phone down on a towel. I ran upstairs and I said, hey, pick up the phone. <laughs> It's decaying from Urban Outfitters. So we played that game for quite a while. They flew out and they looked at the property. They said, okay, we'll take it. Okay, well, we hadn't even signed the lease to lease the building yet. So the next immediate call was, hey, Wally, we'll take it. <laughs> Where do we sign? And then we built the rest of the tenants around it. So uh, lucky for us, it was a big experiment, but it's still alive and kicking uh, today. My office is there. I feel like it's my home. I've been there literally. 30 years <laughs> and counting. Okay, so next. This is the original lab building, Chris. If you, <laughs> it has changed a bit. It was a, a, a night vision goggle factory. Uh, and I had to get security clearance to take a tour. There was asbestos in a huge tower in the back lot. There was another building ready to fall over back there. They go, well, we won't even charge you rent for that. Well, now it hosts it holds our uh, Michelin five-star restaurant, Hana Ray, is in the building that was going to fall over uh, 30 years ago. Okay, and this we learned. <laughs> I'm sure many of you are small business people. Okay, entrepreneurs are willing to work 80 hours a week to avoid working 40 hours a week. So we were on site every day, all the time. This is me 30 years ago and the beginning of our reconstruction of the building. And actually, the lab buildings are two parallel rectangles and they, were, they are some of the oldest buildings in Costa Mesa. So uh, they, are, they were built in 1955. Wow. Uh, this is Gwen Stefani, if any of you recognize, and she was in high school at the time and she was one of the bands that we hired to play in our common area. Like, I can't get a hold of her now. I don't know what happened. <laughs> um, I think it's through building the lab. We carved out, we kind of dropped, if you can imagine, a, a, a square in the middle of the two parallel buildings and cut that space out. We call it the living room. And we let people hang out there. And in the early days, they hung out there a little too much. They were there in the morning, and they had been there all night. So, but now we have a happy 
you know, hang out. So people come there, and especially during COVID, when I was the only one literally on the property, all the stores were closed, people came there, and we rolled up the doors, and we let them hang out six feet apart with their computers. And you know, we wanted that to be part of our formula, you know, especially because with the lab, we were really uh, targeting a younger demographic because, again, we were emerging from that surf industry. This is the lab today. We have a very famous barrel fountain. We have, this is our lab logo on the front of Bristol Street. There's a long promenade between the two buildings in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, because we are artists generally, we have murals all around the property and they change about every six months. I call it, I rearrange the furniture and we get other people to do installs for us. We have a lot of kiosks up here. We call them kiosks because that's how we were approved by the planners in Costa Mesa. But they're trailers, they're sheds and all kinds of strange things. Here's more lab. Um, we often host artisan markets. We often have live music. Uh, we feature uh, young uh, local musicians. Uh, we've had a kids band. The average age was 12. They were amazing. We've had them back by popular demand. Um, we have uh, actually art in progress. Our murals are always done on site and we uh, kind of time lapse them so it's fun to watch the progress. We just put up a new mural uh, two weeks ago. Okay, so in retrospect, as I was actually preparing for tonight, I thought, well, what is the common thread? Because you'll see all of our properties are very individual. And I think this, uh, I'll have to send this to my ex-partner. <laughs> Finally figured out what have we been doing for 30 years. Okay, so this is the lab recipe, okay? Step one, we do respect history. And I think we didn't realize that till we were on to our second or third project. But we, as designers, were always attracted to historical buildings because they are unique and they have details you don't see anymore and they don't look like cookie cutters. So now I think now I have that realization but intuitively we were always drawn to buildings that needed a little love we said. So respect history, respect that building. Um, repurpose for the community. Every one of our projects is really community based and built for that environment. Uh, we've been asked a million times, build a lab here, build a lab there. People in Florida and Seattle and all over the place. And we can't duplicate what we did in Costa Mesa because we built it for Costa Mesa. We built it for our neighbors there. We do have many people who came 30 years ago and now they're coming with their kids or they're coming with their buddies or they're drinking too long at Havana on the patio. You know, very familiar faces. So um, step three, we added air, and I'll show you examples of that. And again, we didn't do it consciously, but we added space, open air. And both of us coming from Michigan, where uh, you're in your house drinking beer most of the winter, um, California is a dreamland and a heaven. So we wanted to magnify the beauty of California and the ability to be outside most of the time. Um, we did that in the packing house, and I'll show you. Um, and then the end of the recipe is stir in a little bar, bit, of, bit of art and live music because we're artists and we just gravitate toward live music and art and all those beautiful things uh, in the world. Okay, Anaheim Packing House, you may have heard. <laughs> um, that was quite a project. Actually, the city of Anaheim came to us and said, we've rescued a building, it's our last citrus packing warehouse. You guys are the retail gurus. Tell us what to put in there. Should we have a shoe store? Should we have, a, and we're going like, oh my goodness, stop. We went into the building and this is the first view we had of the packing house, it's two story. And they said, well, we're gonna park cars downstairs. And we said, no, <laughs> it's a historical building. It's like a church, you don't park cars downstairs. So we were consultants. And uh, my ex-partner, actually, to his credit, was savvy enough to say, we'll be consultants, but with an option to buy at the end of the day. And we did do that. And uh, I'm very glad he did that. Um, the first thing we did was add air. So it's a two-story, and the oranges used to come down the conveyor belt to the basement and were sorted, and then they were brought upstairs. Well, we cut this big of a hole upstairs. 
because we wanted air and we wanted natural light from the sawtooth roof to come down to the bottom floor. You can't rent a cave to a tenant, especially a food tenant, and have people go down there and eat. It wouldn't be a comfortable environment. So we got permission. We had to bring in the historians to give us a stamp of approval. But when we explained the repurposing of this building and how we were going to celebrate the food production and the agriculture in the local area, um, they let us do this. So uh, we had fingers crossed for a long time. So if you go, I'll show you pictures of what it looks like today with people in it. <laughs> Okay, look upstairs. We also added a mezzanine because we know the value of live music and how that creates an environment. So we have music almost every weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, on that stage. Um, we have a lot of entertainment on that stage. I think uh, Devin now has uh, book writers uh, meetings and all kinds of uh, very expanded uh, community outreach on that stage. Um, this, you can kind of see uh, the stools along the perimeter so people can eat and people watch and see all the restaurants and eateries downstairs. Uh, we've got swings, we've got all kinds of entertainment. It spills out onto Farmers Park, which connects to the Packard Building, which we also own. Oh, and then across the street, the Make Building. Um, the Make Building, uh, the, so the Packing House is over here. And across the street, this is uh, Anaheim Boulevard there, uh, was the Make Building. We call it the Make Building. But the Crawfords took like the oranges that maybe were not perfect and made orange marmalade in this building. Mm -hmm. And that is, was her first name Annie? I keep, yeah. Annie? OK. OK. Wow, I remember something. <laughs> OK. Annie Crawford and I think her brother uh, were running this and making marmalade. Uh, I think it's the grandson, who's a grown man, came into the packing house one day and he goes, hey, you know, when are you going to open that? And I said, oh, well, what's your interest over there? And he goes, well, you know, my great aunt or whatever it was made marmalade over there. I go, sit down, we have to talk. <laughs> he gave me the recipe. <laughs> So that was amazing. I just felt like that was someone handed me a gold necklace or whatever. That was that was amazing. So the building looks different. There was a, um, a quite a devastating fire in that building, and when um, the city opened it up for us to look at it, because they didn't know what to do with it, they actually had a lot of storage items in there. The ceiling was literally black, burned. So I don't know what kind of fire that is, but it wasn't structural, but it was all black. So what we did was used a lot of that black wood as um, almost like wallpaper down the entry in the back hallway. So if you enter the make building through the back door, which is public access also, you'll see the, the original burnt wood from that um, ceiling. Oh, too fast. Um, this is the make renovation. So we added this big uh, structure out front. We used a lot of empty bottles. These are all lit, backlit. Uh, we bought that truck because it's of the era and we backed it into the foyer, so it's art. <laughs> According to the planners in the Anaheim. Uh, and it's doing great. It has a distillery, it has Pally Wine, um, it had a barbecue, I think that just changed, that used to just change, but there's four very strong tenants in there and it's a fun, kind of maybe a little more intimate uh, locale, locale just uh, south, would it be, of uh, the packing house. Center Street Promenade, okay. In our discussions with Anaheim uh, regarding the packing house, uh, the city had built some retail facades on Center Street Promenade, which dead ends into City Hall, and they were managing it. And by now, we were getting the hang of being retail property managers and owners. And we started complaining to the city that uh, their facades didn't look good and they weren't keeping them up. And then they finally said, okay, sit down, why don't you buy it from us? <laughs> and we said, okay. Um, they made us, of course, commit to upgrade everything, which we did above and beyond what they required of us. And I'm the proud owner of the retail on Center Street Promenade right now. They're all small businesses. That's what we specialize in. You're not going to see Dunkin' Donuts there. You're going to see people like Good Town Donuts, which is a family-owned business. Please eat the donuts, by the way, because otherwise I'll be in the car for an hour and <laughs> bad things will happen. Okay. 
Um, so Center Street Promenade, um, and in the Good Food Hall, which is kind of a little mini food court on Center Street Promenade, I hand-selected vintage photos of all the young families that came into Anaheim in the early 1900s who established their family businesses in that immediate area. Now I know the street names changed a bit, so I'm not sure if we're really on the original Center Street. No, we're not, but we're near. <laughs> so I felt to honor them. So you'll see lots of pictures, and I was really proud to see a lot of women-owned businesses and the woman postmaster at the time. So if you ever have a little time, stop in, and we have a, a little key uh, along the other wall, and you'll see all these um, amazing people who started their businesses there. This is Center Street today. There's the good food hall I just spoke of. So I've added uh, orange umbrellas and orange planters and just reflecting the agricultural history. There's a lot of lemon trees on the promenade now and I'm very proud of all our uh, small businesses. They're, they're thriving. There's a lot of special community events on the street, farmer's market every Thursday, movie nights during COVID, um, all kinds of fun things happening on uh, Center Street. Um, an old building is like a show. You smell the soul of the building and the building tells you how to redo it. So this is my intro to the Casino San Clemente. We were doing a project, uh, trying to do a project in the city of San Clemente for some time and it, it ultimately failed. Uh, but while we were failing, uh, we watched the Casino San Clemente in the hands of another developer and he was proposing to the city of San Clemente to make it into two and three story ocean view condos in the back, to add retail in the grand ballroom, and to park it underneath the structure. And we as designers and somewhat attracted to historical buildings were going, don't let this happen. <laughs> um, because the building is just unbelievably beautiful and very unique with the big rotunda ballroom. It was modeled, it's really the poor cousin of the casino on Catalina Island. Uh, that was uh, also a historic dance hall. Again, I'm sure you already know before we knew that a casino in those days was not a gambling casino, it was a dance hall. It comes from the Latin word uh, or root casa, gathering, drinking, happy, be merry, dancing, music. So ultimately, that developer failed. This beautiful building went to auction. I was there shaking like a leaf. We wanted to save the building. I had never been in it. It was an auction. You bring cash and you stand there on, outside on the steps. This is the craziest thing I've ever heard of in my life. And I'm there. I've got my partner on my cell phone and we're ready to deal with anyone who comes up. We just wanted to save the building. We had no plan for this building. This is 2009, and that is the original picture to the left. I think that's the oldest picture I have found of the Casino San Clemente when it opened in 1937. As a dance hall, Judy Garland was there, Mickey Rooney was there. I, I put all the headshots on the wall down the whole history hallway that I built uh, because I was so starstruck myself. <laughs> okay, uh, we won the auction. I guess that's... The next part of this, the, the story, uh, we started renovating. So a lot of these are original pictures. Um, this is the orig original ballroom right there before we got it. That's probably in the late 1930s. Uh, this is the rock garden, the back of the building up right there. Um, when, we, uh, when I entered the building, it had most recently been used by an Eastern medicine practitioner. And this is the West Wing. I'll show you other pictures of the West Wing. It originally was a restaurant. This is the original 1930s, 40s. I don't know if you can see it, but old leather booths. And they would come and have uh, cocktails and smoke. And then they would go in to dance the night away. Um, and that's the uh, original ballroom when we bought it. Um, but the practitioners worked in the West Wing. And there was a drop ceiling. They had little booths like a, an old time office. And in the grand ballroom, in this room, these are all uh, vinyl chairs. Someone would have a podium in the middle of the ballroom and give lectures about Eastern medicine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. So, then comes the Sudeikis. <laughs> okay, this is the casino today. This is my happy place. I'm there uh, every other week. 
I run an underground jazz club there now because I love jazz and I'm having the time of my life making absolutely no money on it, but you know, whatever. But luckily we have a very thriving wedding business here. Um, and if you go back to my quote, it says the building will tell you what to do. We honestly bought this building. We had no plan for it. We're retail landlords and we bought this incredible dance hall. We had no idea what to do. And I spent a lot of time just sitting in the middle of that ballroom going, speak to me, like what the heck? What retailer is gonna go into a round ballroom, you know? And Patagonia, who is our, is our tenant up in the camp in Costa Mesa, they said, well, we'll come down and look at it. I'm going, I don't think that feels right. I love Patagonia, they're a very ethical, um, environmentally conscious company, but I, in a round ballroom, and I'm just sitting there, and then people started coming in the door. People who lived in San Clemente came in, oh, are you opening again? I used to be a busboy here, and we had a buffet, and then we had dinner theater here, and then light bulbs started going on, I'm going, oh my gosh, we have to remember that. How can we reinterpret that? So it was honestly from people coming in the door and then finally one, one person comes in, I can run events out of here, you should hire me. And I thought, well, wait a minute. If we're gonna run events, I wanna do it. <laughs> yeah. So here we are. I think we have about 100 weddings a year now here, which pays for my jazz club. <laughs> okay, so um, here's our new bar that I carved out. Here's the rock garden. When we first got the rock garden, there were weeds like waist high. There were beer bottles everywhere and a few dead animals. And I'm going, what's been going on back here? And uh, we stood there for a while and then someone threw a beer bottle over the wall. And there's an alley to the left of that rock garden and people would drive down there and they could throw empty beer bottles over the wall. So we started collecting them and then we wore like hard hats for a while. And then we made it into a beautiful garden. I hired uh, Molly Wood in uh, Costa Mesa who is just a talented uh, landscape designer and we've got white roses everywhere and then the bride started coming as if, you know, by uh, intuition. Here's uh, the ballroom set up for a wedding. If you go on our website, you'll just be mesmerized. You, you would think after 10 years I've seen every wedding. Every wedding is completely different, but I will not get married again. Okay. So. <laughs> Okay, so music is another part of our recipe. Music just relaxes people, it speaks to people. Um, I don't know, there's something magical about music. I love this uh, quote, it's, I can't find who really authored it, it's anonymous, but I often, when we have fundraisers at the casino, I always have a jazz, I put all my favorite jazz people on the stage and we have fundraisers for Alzheimer's, uh, which runs in my family. So uh, I always read this and everybody laughs, but it's so true. I love this, one of my favorite quotes. So can I read it to you? Yes, I will read it to you, you can't stop me. Okay, <laughs> music, the other non-addictive mood, mood altering non-substance. Ask your doctor if music is right for you. Common side effects include, but are not limited to uncontrolled head bopping, toe tapping, finger snapping, selective hearing impairment, and persistent melody flashbacks. Flashbacks. I haven't been drinking. Okay, so I love that. Oh, and here's some of the jazz uh, going on. Here's uh, one of our fundraisers where we had a whole ballroom full of uh, people, contributors. Uh, Tim Gill, he used to play at uh, Disneyland, was a big favorite of ours. We've had music on the patios, we've had music in the rock garden during COVID. The city was kind enough to let us play outside. That was interesting. I was a busboy with a mask, gloves, and people sit uh, six feet apart, but everybody loved it. It, it was awesome. It was really um, during a, a hard time. Uh, okay. Uh, old ideas can sometimes use new buildings. New ideas must use old buildings. I love this quote also, and it kind of speaks to the project I'm involved in right now, which is in Garden Grove. It's called Cottage Industries, and that's my logo. Um, we bought 12 houses from the city of Garden Grove that they had been using for um, affordable housing. And so they were short-term renters, and there was really no pride of ownership. And uh, unfortunately, in the neighborhood was probably not what it could be. And the city was ready to move affordable housing um, uh, entitlements to another part of their city. So they had 12 houses scattered across 
three blocks, 7th, 8th, and 9th streets in Garden Grove, very close to City Hall and the police station and all that, if you're familiar with Garden Grove. And they came to us and said, we don't know what to do with them. And actually, I think they were trying to show us another building that they had uh, uh, an interest in us taking over. But we were attracted to the homes. So what we started was Cottage Industries. Um, I, have, I am now in charge of this project. So the 12 houses, anything that, uh, the whole idea is to take small businesses and put them into these homes. So they're my tenants, but we saved the homes. The oldest home we have is a 1914 uh, house, and it's so special, and the proportions are so tiny, I feel like a very large person in there. And um, we have a couple gorgeous craftsmen with hardwood floors and beautiful wood windows, so each house is unique, and I think that's what attracted us to the project. So I have, um, the map on your left is uh, one of my site plans of showing the uh, landscaping. I think the beauty of this project, and one reason I really love it, is there's so much land. They're like 100 foot deep lots. It's like, in Orange County, where do you find land like this? And I'm going, I keep telling the city, because they were on me, like, I talk to them every other week. They come on site all the time. And I say, this is gold, you've given me gold, and I'm so grateful, and we're having so much fun together. And um, this morning we had a phone call, and I said they can come in the next week, and they can put their initials in wet cement, and they got so excited. I've never seen a planner go, really? <laughs> anyway, yes, really. Okay, so cottage industries, I'm kind of in the middle of construction. Uh, all the black houses will be, um, I have a smokehouse, uh, Smokehouse Queen who's coming. She started her business. This is so precious. She started her business during COVID in her house, which I'm sure was illegal, but she had lines around the block for the smoked meats she was doing in a little six foot smoker. So I am her first brick and mortar location. I am so proud. She's got so much energy. I'm learning from her every day. Uh, her name is Winnie Lee and she will have three uh, five foot by 20 foot smokers in the front yard of the house. I built her a huge deck in the back, which is this, it's almost complete right now. And I connected the backyards on 9th Street to the backyards on 8th Street. I also inherited a community garden that the city said, oh, we assumed you would build on that. I said, what? <laughs> A community garden? No way. We need a community garden. I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell these gardeners to pull up their carrots and go home. So we're making it a green space. I, I shrunk it a little bit, and I'm adding some amenities for them, like they can charge their phone now, and there's running water now. They don't have to steal it from the neighbors. So we're working all those things out. Uh, we should be open by the end of the summer. So I'm very excited about that. There are um, several more homes to uh, renovate. Oops, sorry. Um, uh, there are actually nine more homes to renovate. There's only three in the first phase. Uh, and those will, some of those uh, we've decided to, because uh, this is very exciting for us to do, to, to keep them residential. So I'll be a residential landlord on five of them, and we're going to add five ADUs in the back. Because from the time we started this project six years ago, there's now, of course, you all have heard about the housing shortage. So the city had approved us to make those homes motel rooms. But as a mom of three teenage boys, like I'm going, oh, I can see an Airbnb party mania happening. So we have gotten the city to reverse that use to a residential use and adding the ADUs in the back, which the state is mandating anyway. So I'm excited as a designer because it can go so fast. And the state, thank you, Governor, did one thing right. In 60 days, uh, the city has to approve my plans or I get to go forth. So if you've worked with the planning department, it, it's not 60 days. <laughs> okay, so, oh, so another project that will come after Cottage and is starting the wheels turning now, this definitely applies. If you're familiar with the Balboa Theater on the Balboa Peninsula, I own that. Okay, I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. Okay, and I have to laugh. Okay, so this applies. Uh, the Balboa Theater during, I forget what decade, was the Pussycat Theater. Okay. I, 
Enough said. Okay, so politicians, old buildings, and prostitutes become respectable with age. So I hope to add respectability to the Balboa Theater. Um, you can see far left and the Balboa Theater. I always forget the date of that. Uh, 1928. Yeah, built in 1928. It was closed in 1992. It was a pussycat theater at that time. Um, and a lot of people remember the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which I believe showed many times. I'll do that again, okay? So, yeah, write it down. Okay, so this picture on the far right is the Balboa Theater today. We haven't touched it yet. Uh, a lot of nonprofits before us own the building and put forth ideas and actually got entitlements through Coastal, which I have inherited. Thank them very much. Um, but they ran out of money when it came time to construct. And also, that is the challenge for me right now because the cost of cement and steel, this building needs a lot of steel. There's 34 foot brick walls which are gorgeous and not one inch of rebar in them. So I'm hoping there will not be any earthquake over 5.5 or I will own a lot of bricks <laughs> on the ground for your picking. This is what it looks like today. I did not add any of this artwork. This was added before <laughs> my time. It is a mess. There are dead birds in there. There's uh, piano-sized holes in the roof. There are, uh, it looks like people have lived in there for a long, long time. But we have plans to renovate this theater. I'm very excited. We are talking to the city on a weekly basis. Uh, I had played with some variations. I had played with, I thought, a favorite design of having an open air performance theater and have a view to the sky. Well, that, unfortunately, my oldest son is now working for me. What a pain in the ass. He uh, went to Berkeley and he's a finance like guru, savant, and he's telling me, mama does a pencil, mama does a pencil. So when he showed me how badly he did a pencil. So we put the roof back on. So there will be a mezzanine and a roof type restaurant. So um, it will pencil now, so we're marching forward. Okay, I guess the theater in Fullerton that could use some help. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know. This, you know what? When we fix the packing house, I think we learned every city, city in the state of California that had a packing house that was in need of help. I mean, the phone kept ringing and ringing. So, yeah. Okay, but, but call me. Okay. <laughs> okay. So in the end, the character of a civilization is encased in its structures, that's Frank Gehry, you know, that we all admire, and I think that really speaks to what we're all here for, and I really want to thank all of you. I'm just a fashion designer gone astray. You guys have really been the heroes that have saved buildings. Really, the packing house would not have been saved without community rallying around that building and really forming a chain around that building and protecting it because the rest of them, there were 12 originally, the other 11 were either bulldozed or burned up or fell apart. So I really give credit to the community and I think for the casino also, when the, when the other developer was trying to build condos in the backyard and underground parking and he even talked about moving the ballroom closer to Pico so we could add more units. I mean, it's like oh, insanity, you know? It's the community that rose up and the historical societies in Anaheim and San Clemente are very close to them. They come to jazz all the time, so, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. If you, if you have any questions, I'm here. I'm very accessible, you know, if you even think of something in the middle of the night. Just, yeah, yes, purple. Thank you. I used to work in San Clemente. I used to drive by the casino all the time. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. That's great. It's absolutely my pleasure. My question is, if you have a chance to take hold of a building in Orange County, what would it be and what would you do with it? I'd have to look at the building and I would have to sit in there for a while and figure out what was there and how it can be but brief. But is there something that, you, that you've seen that, boy, I'd like to get my hands on that? I think my plate is full right now. I've got nine houses screaming my name, and I've got one theater that I try to pretend is not really there. Yeah, yes? Oh, piggybacking on him, if you, when your plate clears, yeah. there's an old YMCA in Santa Ana that could run a musical club. And it's not, it's vacant right now? 
it's still there. Yeah. Because um, one of our caterers, Jay's Catering, took over a YMCA. I think it was in Orange. Where was it? I just know Jay's Catering. Yeah. Yeah, but they, I think it was a YMCA in, in Orange. Yeah, they work out of Garden Grove, but they, they actually are starting their own venue renovations right now so that they can cater. And they, they grabbed a YMCA recently, and I'm sorry I don't remember which, where it was. Sorry? Oh, YW. YM, YC. We're all the same. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm curious, on the cottage, um, the cottage homes, I grew up in Garden Grove. Yeah. I'm, were those all individually owned and you had to buy them from each person? No, the city owned all of them. So I have one fat mortgage with the city of Garden Grove like right now. Closure to that well. comes due in 2029, but I'll be done. Yes, ma'am. But it's just so interesting. I mean, that, yeah. So these are, so they were foreclosures that you were, I mean, it, it just sounds The city good. owned them and they just wanted to move that use mm -hmm. elsewhere in the city. I'm not sure the reasons why. But they wanted to add some vibrancy, and also, if you're familiar with the other developer who started Steelcraft in Garden Grove, they felt like that was the beginning of maybe a renovation of that area. So I think that's why they they handed them to us. Great, that's yeah. a great area too. Fantastic. Yeah, no, I'm very excited. I'm there every other day right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So did you say if you're thinking about turning the Balboa into a restaurant space? No, it's actually we're entitled for it to be a performance center, which is right up our alley. Music, art, and there is a, a in-house cafe and an in-house bar, right. of course, because bars actually pay your mortgage. Uh, so. the slanted and brides, depends on the right. location. <laughs> and the floor, it still has a slanted floor, right? It had a slanted floor. Right now it has no floor. In fact, my construction kickoff party will be a beach party. You bring your beach chair. It is sand. Oh. I don't know what happened to the original floor. It is sand. It's crazy. Every time I go in there, I just laugh like, oh my gosh, this is like the worst possible building you can hand me. I love it. I love it. Okay? Yes. I saw another hand somewhere. Yes? It's probably sand from dredging of Newport Harbor. Oh, maybe. Because all of that is, is landfill. We're only a half a block from the state. Each. So be prepared for the word liquefaction. Yeah, I'm praying for no, li yeah, liquefaction or earthquake and it's all over. I own a lot of air at a very high price. Yeah. Fingers crossed, yes. Uh, do you have a website that I can see the houses in Garden Grove? Or? Yeah, it's called Cottage Industries. It's thecottageindustries.com. It's just kind of a landing page right now. But we're going to be ramping that up because we will be opening uh, by the end of the summer, at least the first few tenants. I live there and I'm in the historical society. Oh, really? Oh, great. Thank you. I could use volunteers <laughs> for the grand opening. Because, you know, it's such a hidden area and to find something like that in a residential neighborhood, we're going to really have to market it, maybe use some conventional methods, which I don't like to do, but, you know, press release, you know, something like that. Yes? What other types of Tenants, are you looking for for Garden Grove? Are you looking for artisans or what? Yeah, I'm looking for artisans, and I, um, of the five houses that we can rent for residential, um, and the five ADUs behind them, I would love, and I don't know if this is considered discrimination, but I would love artisan types or small business owners to be part of our cottage industries community. And I think I already rented one to <laughs> my tenant at, that will be opening in August. So, um, yeah. I, I, we need people who understand because there's going to be commercial uses within the residential mm -hmm. area, which is kind of unconventional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it, folks? Uh, are you familiar with the Fox Theater? Yes. I went to a really, really cool Halloween party there. 20, 20 years now, we're going on since they saved it from the wrecking ball. And, like, do you have any comments about hurting anybody's feelings that you can say about what may have gone wrong with all that? I'll tell you one thing. One constant roadblock is financing. Yeah, yeah I know. That's huge. Banks don't understand it. I had a, a, a letter of intent on... Cottage Industries, the first little project. It's really a small project. I'm a, you know, 
a very small developer, if you can call it that, and wasn't asking for a whole lot of money. And they came and said, okay, we'll lend you on it. And then the higher ups drove by, is what I was told, when they called me and said, sorry, we're, we're withdrawing our LLI. Mm -hmm. So right now, every brick that's laid, I'm paying for. I believe in this project and I'm paying for it myself. Yeah, they ran into a lot of seismic renovation. Uh, Everything is so expensive right now. And if well, you're doing the unconventional, and rehabbing a theater is unconventional, you don't have McDonald's as your tenant, you don't have you know the big players as your tenants, yeah. it's really difficult. It's really, and it's getting more difficult. Mm -hmm. It's a big, and that's why those before us on the Balboa Theater failed. They didn't really fail, it's the banks failed to them. Let's put it that way. There's donuts. I brought lab bags too. They're from our 25 year anniversary because we're actually in the 30 year anniversary, so these are old bags, but they're, they're usable. They're great. I knocked off a Trader Joe's bag, so they're good. They come from a good, good background. Okay. Where do the donuts come from again? Good Town Donuts. They're a very small tenant of ours at the lab. I'm there once a week. Oh, They're so good. The matcha donuts are to die for. Okay. Yeah. This is the bad thing about being a landlord when you have Good Town Donuts, Kuro Pizza, Havana. I mean, yeah, I wear very good clothing. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. Thank you, that was fantastic. And yes, thank you for the donuts. I snuck one back there during the meeting, and that is one of the best donuts I've ever had, and I have a lot of them, as you can tell. Uh, and then I went and I had another one, too. I, yeah, so, sorry to whoever doesn't get one, because I had two, but. Uh, all right, well, thank you very much. Um, that was wonderful, and um, I, uh, I think uh, a lot of us are going to be going and visiting some of these other locations. I mean, we all know the ones that are sort of in our backyard, but, you know, this is an encouragement to get out and, and see the others and, and experience those. So, um, yeah, they all look, they're, they're, the ones I've, I've been to are fantastic, the other ones look fantastic. So, and we're all looking forward to the theater and what happens mm -hmm. there and Garden Grove, so, uh, as well, so. Um, thank you all for coming tonight, and um, I also just want to remind you, if you haven't signed up for the annual dinner, time's a-waste, and so uh, I, I hope to see you, uh, at least a lot of you there in uh, June, and it should be a fun time. And uh, thank you all, and we'll see you next time.